Welcome back to Pink Beak Genetics. Uh, this portion, uh, I'm going to visit uh, about EPDs, and, and, and I have through some of the other topics, uh, kind of how we select EPDs, but uh, uh, there's more to cattle breeding than just EPDs, uh, obviously, and, and most of you know that. Uh, uh, just some of the things we do, again, different at Pink Beef Genetics is we try not to follow fads. Uh, uh, it seems like throughout the beef cattle industry, and and I'm not old enough to remember them, so, uh, but, uh, you know, in the 1940s and 50s, cattle were belt buckle high, and that was the kind we needed. And then as we moved into the 70s, the exotic craze and just huge growth, and then the 80s, uh, the frame 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, uh, bulls and females that were went in the shows and those kind of things. Very few breeders stuck to their guns and continued to breed that type of animal that worked throughout the industry. So, and, and I think that sometimes EPDs have become a fad too. And I really has to hesitate to say that. I've been involved in several uh, uh, beef uh, organizations, BIF, uh, Beef Improvement Federation, some different things. So uh, I'll just say up front, I believe in EPDs. Uh, but Dr. Dave Daly from California, and I hope it's okay to quote him, it's not quite exactly right, probably, but uh, uh, he had an article here a year or two ago, and I've always tried to remember this, that with the tools available today, it's easier to go backwards faster than ever before. It's easier to go backwards faster than ever before. So EPDs are a tool along with everything else. And within that, that doesn't always mean the, the lowest is best or the highest is best. Because as we've talked in some of the other bullet points, the extremes are what tends to get in trouble. We like to use a balanced approach here. And when I say balanced, you can call it old fashioned, you can call it dragging, dragging our feet. Uh, my friends give me a lot of headaches uh, gigging me all the time about that. But what we try to do is be cautious and careful as we move forward. We don't want to want change one trait here and cost us a pile of money on this end. So we try to use balanced traits, EPDs that across the board fit most areas the very best that they can. And when you get high accuracy like we try to achieve in balanced EPDs and with that proof behind them, then you have a product you can go forward with. And again, remember Dr. Daly's comments, you can go backwards faster than you ever could before because of the tools we have available. Uh, also, I, I haven't touched, I don't think any on, and, and the other topic is just convenience traits. We're extremely high, we've talked about feet and legs, but udder quality, uh, good tight udders, it's still milk uh, with a good teat size. There's nothing worse than having a cow in the snowbank or in the middle of a, of a 10,000 acre pasture in the summertime with teats that are this long and blown up this big. Everybody knows what that leads to and all it is is genetic. Those things can be selected for. And other traits uh, such as disposition, uh, which is now measured by some breeds. But the convenient traits are the traits that are not measured by EPDs and we really try hard pay a lot of attention to them. Again, fertility is one of the big ones. Uh, again, we've touched on structure. I won't uh, uh, visit about that anymore, but if you haven't seen the structure bullet point uh, on feet and legs, please go back and look at it. Uh, our Charolais, uh, the Angus, we, we look for that balanced program, the maternal cow, because that's where we think the Angus breed fits the best. I don't know as we need, in our opinion, to make her the highest growth of all the breeds. Because if we do, it's just like I said, if, if we go too far one direction, then we're going to have a bigger, harder doing, mature cow out here in all probability that costs a lot more. For example, you may have a bull that's a dollar, uh, dollar B or dollar beef of a hundred in, in the Angus breed. He may be a dollar uh, EN or dollar energy for minus 40. Well, you need to subtract those, you come up with, in my mind, a $60 profit or whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you have a bull that's say 80 uh, for a dollar B and he's zero for dollar energy, you've actually got more potential profit with that bull than you do with the, with the higher dollar B bull. Uh, we, so we need to keep these things in mind. Dollar weaning is extremely important. 
Uh, and the guys, the producers that sell your calves at weaning time, that's a big player. But do you go all for dollar weaning? Probably not, in our opinion. You look at dollar energy also, and then dollar B, keeping in mind that dollar B is a terminal index when used alone without any other criteria. So it's a balance of, of balancing these traits. Uh, the Charlet breed, again, we probably lean a little more terminal with it, but we do produce bulls in there that are more moderate because we have guys that are keeping those smoky females to make replacements. And they do make fantastic replacements. A smoky female, moderate, moderate heifers kept, and used out of moderate bulls and moderate cows will make some of the best replacements that you can get your hands on. And that's a contradiction to what a lot of people will tell you. But those cows will last forever. They'll be 25% more uh, reproductive efficient, 25% more efficient on, uh, on, on grass to eat and everything else. So you pick up a lot of efficiency in those type of things. So, uh, the Charlet, again, we've dealt uh, with the carcass, probably a little more on the marbling, uh, and, and try and keep uh, our emphasis more on the, on the end product on the Charlet, but we do watch the maternal. So all in all, that's some of the things we look at in EPDs. We try to balance them out. Again, a, a breeder can chase one area here and forget this area, and really when you, you blend it all out, you haven't gained that much. So uh, with, with those thoughts, that's our thoughts on EPDs and how to use them. And always remember, you can go backwards faster than you've ever been able to go before.